Welcome to Rainier Avenue Radio. This is Afternoons with Monique, recording live in Seattle, Washington, every Thursday at 1 p.m. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Monique Lee from Afternoons with Monique, and you are on Rainier Avenue Radio. Today, I have the pleasure to invite two of my associates, Victoria Bonda and Isabel Pfeiffer, on my show. I uh, work with Victoria and uh, Isabel at Seattle Love Broker, and they help me with uh, the show Afternoons with Monique as well. Thank you so much for coming and joining us on the show today, Victoria and Isabel. Thank you for having us. Yeah, it's definitely a pleasure. Yeah, it's a pleasure having you work for me and now having you on the show. I thought it would be fun to have the two of you on the last episode of the year. We're wrapping up a very difficult year with COVID and uh, everything that is changing all around us. Your school uh, is remote and you are interning a lot of your work remotely as well. So I just love to learn from your perspective, what your schooling and experience with your friends, uh, with dating and, and schooling as well. So Victoria, can you tell our audience uh, a little bit about your background, where you're from and how long you've been living in Washington? Yeah, uh, so I'm, I grew up here, but my family is from Russia originally. And I went to Russian school, so I know how to speak and write in Russian. Um, but I grew up in Bothell area most of my life. And now I'm in University of Washington studying media and communication. And I happened to meet Monique and became her intern for social media and marketing. And yeah, it's been a great challenge and journey. Yeah. 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 Well, Victoria is a senior, right, at the UW, and uh, you major in media and communications, I understand, with a very high GPA, 3.8. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Victoria is hoping to uh, join the marketing or HR or PR world when you graduate. Is that right? Exactly, yes. Okay. Well, how about you, Isabel? Tell us about you. Um, well, my name is Isabel Pfeiffer. I was born and raised in San Antonio, Texas, and my family decided to move to Spokane, Washington during my senior year of high school when I was 17. Um, since I was in Washington, I decided to apply to University of Washington. Now I study psychology and linguistics. Yeah, so Isabel is also very good with technology. I rely on uh, Isabel for a lot of technical questions, which I always have a lot of. So uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. And also thank you for helping me through the last quarter with a lot of the uh, technical and also marketing challenges with both the show and um, Seattle Law Broker, the company. So I know that Victoria, is from Russia and she's fluent in uh, Russian, writing, speaking. I was so proud that we, between the three of us, we cover so many languages. Now, I know Isabel, you you have a number of languages that you're able to, to, to speak and, and also write, and you travel quite a bit. Uh, can you share with us how many languages and places that you've been uh, around the world? Sure, yeah, and I'll, and I'll introduce uh, those languages too in case any of the viewers speak them. Uh, so one of my home languages is English and the other one is Spanish. So hola <laughs> para todos que hablan español. And uh, my dad uh, is German, but I only know a little bit. Um, so ich bin Isabel. And I studied abroad in Seoul, Korea. So annyeonghaseyo, jeonun isabelirago hamnida. Um, Listen I to you. <laughs> I, I really <laughs> I love, love it. it. Yeah, and I um, met a lot of international students at UW, and they inspired me to also want to learn Japanese. Konnichiwa, hajime mashite, izi des. And Chinese, ni hao ma, wo shi yi shaber. So that's just a little introduction. I also am learning American Sign Language and Uzbek, as one of my best friends is from Uzbekistan. Um, but yeah, definitely language learning is a passion of mine and it helps with your brain, which is one of my passions as well. Right. So, you know, I think that's a total of six languages plus 
you are also uh, a very technical person. So computer language and, and uh, technical languages is another gift that I think Isabel brings to the world. Thank you for sharing that with us. How about you, Victoria? Um, can you say something in Russian? Привет, все, как дела? What does that mean? I said, hi, everyone. How are you? Oh, that's so cool. Well, I um, I really enjoy working with you guys, and I got, got a chance to learn about your background and a lot of your abilities and talents. And Victoria, you are particularly good with handling people, and you have incredible amount of patience with people as well. So thank you for that. Um, and Isabel, you're so gifted with uh, technical stuff. So I want to first thank you for all the help that you've done for Afternoons with Monique and Seattle Law Broker. It was, it was a lot of, um, I, I really appreciate your, your help. Um, yeah, so I would like to also learn about your experience during the pandemic. Obviously, it's been a challenging year for everyone, right? Um, a lot of the guests are professionals um, and they share with our viewers their challenges during the pandemic with their professional life. Um, but as students and also, you know, uh, an associate at Seattle Love Broker, you guys also experienced some challenges. I would love to learn uh, what, you, your, what your experience been like and what you might have learned from it. So Victoria, can you share with the uh, audience uh, some of the challenges and, and uh, experience that you've had during the pandemic as, uh, you know, as a student at the UW? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so school was very different and difficult at times because it transitioned to being online 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the challenges made it a lot more fulfilling. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I guess a po positive outcome that came out of this was connecting with my peers was actually online. very good. Yeah, online. Um, people had their guard down and they were more vulnerable. So mm -hmm. we actually connected very well. Sometimes we meet occasionally on Zoom for happy mm -hmm. hour still to oh, this day. That's yeah. cool. So I do feel like people are more down to connect. Right, right, right. Um, how about you? What's school like uh, remotely? What are some of the challenges for you, Isabel, for schooling and, and working? Yeah, so one of the challenges I would say is um, just the distraction and difficulty of learning online and so being in a classroom where your attention is forced to be at the presenter. And now here we have so many other things that can distract us like our cell phones or um, noises in our house or construction or other things on our computers and devices. Um, I think also another challenge is having a study group that's stable and making friends in your classes and being able to have that social interaction. Well, you know, the, it's, a, it's a very difficult year with lots of challenges, but I feel like there is some good things that came out of it. And I thought my two associates at Seattle Love Broker and intern uh, would be the perfect um, guests to come on the show and share with us their experience with school um, and, and also with their work and interning. Uh, two co-eds from the University of Washington here in Seattle. They're both seniors and multi-talented uh, ladies that I had the opportunities to work with uh, during the past quarter. So Victoria, we work at Seattle Love Broker, which is a dating and relationship consulting company. Um, tell the audience what your experience like has been like during the pandemic with dating. I would say my experience has been, I guess a little challenging because you need to put in a lot of more effort and be more innovative with date ideas and making sure you have date nights, even though there's a shutdown. So, you know, being creative, like, but at the same time, I feel like these new, it's a new time to, you know, have new ways. Yeah. Like 
have wholesome ideas like cooking with your partner. It's right. A, Get to know yeah. each other. Yeah. It really tests your uh it has your ability and team. ability to connect, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that is a very, uh, very interesting and very important point because I, you're right. We have to uh, figure out different ways to connect with our partner, and uh, you know, just hanging out, and getting to know what the other person is doing and thinking. Um, I think you know, especially in doing new. The, the early stage of relationship, I think a lot of people um, tend to get, they get together in person, they get physical maybe a little bit too fast and didn't have a chance to allow the relationship to progress in its natural pace. And now we ha- we're forced to slow down ah. and get to know the other person, what's in his heart and what's in his mind, right? And I love that. Yeah. And it's not as easy as like, I'll just take her to a restaurant. Now it's like, take her to a hike or <laughs> right? know, like, get creative. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What, how about you, Isabel? I know that you have a long-term boyfriend who lives uh, in another state. So how do you guys stay in touch and keep the connection, the love alive? Yeah, I definitely think it's interesting because during the pandemic, a lot of other couples are sort of experiencing what a long distance couple um, faces on a regular basis um, with not being able to see each other. Uh, So usually when we are a long distance, he's in Texas and I'm in Washington and we see each other every two months, pretty much Um, we'll fly to each other. And usually we would only be able to see each other during a holiday break, maybe for a week or on a weekend for two days. And so because of that, all of our uh, time together would be very fast paced, activity oriented, and it wouldn't be um, just regular old living. It would always be something very adventurous. But since the pandemic hit, it was surprising to me that one positive outcome is that we were able to spend more time together because um, I wasn't forced to stay in Washington. I could study while I was in Texas. So I was able to stay with his family during quarantine for four months. And mm-hmm. during that time, we were just able to relax and have coffee together in the morning and cook together and enjoy all the little things in life and not be like, oh, let's go see the Space Needle and right, travel right. everything. The in normal couple stuff. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So I feel really grateful. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. How long have you been in a relationship, Victoria? four years now oh wow and and yours is pretty long too right Isabel um yeah we've been together for about a year and a half now but we've known each other since we we're 14. wow so these are like long-term connections that you guys have um well these are long-term relationships by the way I have my UW shirt on I found <laughs> my sweatshirt <laughs> and yeah, we're, we're, all three of us came from the UW. We're pr- very proud of that. So Victoria and Isabel will graduate in uh, June 2021. So um, if anyone's listening to the show, you know that Victoria is into PR, HR, HR and marketing. And Isabel is learning to be a clinical neuropsychologist. And I was going to ask you about that. What is the difference between neuropsychologist and a regular psychologist? Yeah, so a neuropsychologist is also a psychologist. You get a PhD in clinical psychology, but your focus is on the brain and behavior. And usually neuropsychologists focus on research oriented between brain and behavior vulnerabilities, um, like memory and cognitive disorders. Um, You also see dementia and Alzheimer's disease. A lot of research is going into that right now um, in order to help with treatment and assessment. Um, So I would love to do that. And also a clinical side would be more working with patients. Um, Mm -hmm. So during this internship, I've been able to uh, work with people and learn more clinical aspects um, Mm -hmm. for my future. And I know that you were um, smart enough to snack and RA and TA teaching uh, for the UW during the pandemic as well. You had a very busy schedule. Tell um, tell us about your RA and TA teaching. What kind of classes did you teach? Yeah, so I'm a 
I was a teaching assistant for a psychology 101 course, um, mm -hmm. which just covers a whole range of different psychology interests. And I worked with about 700 online students that were mainly freshmen and introduced them into the online realm of learning. Um, and then I'm also a research assistant for the Psycholinguistics Child Language Lab at the University of Washington. Very cool. Very talented ladies. Um, back to Victoria, we'd like to know, uh, your, since you're in a long-term relationship, your friends who are single, um, what have their dating experience been like during the pandemic? During the pandemic, I noticed that people are having a hard time figuring out where to go out on a date. Uh, most men lately have been offering their to come over to their place <laughs> to and, the crib. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I know my friend wasn't comfortable with that. She wanted him to, you know, think of something better, not mm -hmm. not somewhere you could get physical right away. Yeah. Also just yeah, too so, fast. Yeah. yeah, so I've noticed that a lot. Guys, right. over time. And as I said with you before, um, I don't recommend because I, you know we work in the relationship field, and I've shared with you guys that I don't, I don't recommend that you know ladies to come to anyone's house, um, no matter how safe he might seem. You know, you probably want to go somewhere neutral, go to the park on a nice sunny day like this and get to know the other person. But yeah, yeah, that offer is kind of dangerous. And before you go anywhere, make sure you know somebody you know, like your family members or friend, know where you went and you know who you're meeting just to be on the safe side. And I have no problem with online dating. You said that a lot of your friends meet people online these days, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, on like, I know Isabel has talked about it, like Tinder, Bumble, eHarmony, that's yeah. popular right now. Yeah, and these days, online diet dating is a fact of life. And, you know, as you know, at Seattle Law Broker, I don't say no to any avenue to meet people, but, uh, you know, make sure you, you be safe out there when you meet new people. And, um, uh, take all kinds, all the precautionary measures to keep yourself safe. How about you, Isabel? Uh, your friends, your single friends been dating online or offline. What's, what's their experience during the pandemic? Yeah, so a lot of my friends tend to use the online dating um, right now because when school's online, it's hard to meet um, potential right? people of interest and your work's yeah. online and yeah, it's hard to flirt with someone with a mask on, but <laughs> right. Yeah, so I think a lot of people are going to online dating, but it's also adds on another layer of difficulty because the pandemic, the virus, you have to get tested before you meet someone um, right. and where to meet um, in a safe environment as well. And is it worth the risk? So all right. these things you have to consider. Right. Internship uh, and your work with me is and it has ended. So this is an opportunity for you to ask one question to the um, expert of uh, relationship advice. Um, what would you want to know? Um, Victoria, do you have any question you want to ask me? I guess I would like to ask what recommendations do you have for first date mm -hmm. other than someone's house? <laughs> All right. So I, I don't recommend going to uh, anybody's house that you don't know uh, well enough to feel comfortable. The first time you meet should be in a, at a neutral location. Unfortunately, during the pandemic, most restaurants are closed. So where do you meet? Coffee shops are also closed. So I would say, you know, on a nice day, uh, look at the weather ahead of time. You have seven days and plan it out. Uh, if you're a guy, you want to make sure that the lady will be covered, you know, bring an umbrella or something in Seattle after all, and uh, meet at a park or a uh, public place. Um, I wouldn't go to anyone's place without checking the persons out, talking at length on the phone, uh, Zooming, um, video chat, FaceTime, until you feel comfortable. 
get to know the person's heart and mind. Uh, appearance is important, but it can only go so far. So hanging out, getting to know, like you said earlier, Victoria, when um, you have a chance to connect e to each other emotionally um, and intellectually before, uh, you know, getting physical. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Excellent idea. So I would say uh, that, uh, Isabel, what has your, um, do you have any question you want to ask the love broker? Um, so as a love broker and during the state of affairs right now with the pandemic, how do you recommend people to go about dating? Well, you know, um, online dating is not all bad. It's just a matter of meeting uh, and knowing how to vet the right person. Um, Seattle Law Broker provides an additional uh, method for people to meet. We do vetting and we uh, screen out potential candidates for our clients who are busy and they don't want to go on 500 coffee dates or 500 meetings uh, a year to meet someone new. So um, what I do here, uh, provide an additional venue. And thank you for asking me that question and allow me to plug Seattle Love Broker for a second there. Um, yeah, I mean, the show is uh, Afternoons with Monique, but I almost never mention uh, the, the the work that I do on these shows because I, it's about the guests and it's um, getting to know who they are and where they've been in their lives. But um, to answer your question, um, you know, using a professional service like Seattle Love Broker as an additional uh, tool is uh, going to be very helpful for the right um, data. I mean, as a single, you probably should learn how to vet people, how to qualify people before you meet them on the phone. I mean, concretely, I would say spend some time on the phone getting to know his background, where he's going with his life, um, what his long-term plans are, uh, what his core values are. That's very important. Um, you know, whether, you know, he see family, children in his, his future. A lot of people shy away from asking these questions, but there are, there is a way to ask without seemingly pushy or intrusive. And this is your life. This is important. So um, it's not just about flirting and just having fun, but at the same time, we only, uh, women uh, only um, have a certain, certain amount of years to build this as optimal. And of course, you can get married anytime you want, but finding the right partner timely and building that family legacy is very important to a lot of women and men who are career focused. Um, knowing how to ask the right questions is an important skill that uh, either you can pick up on your own by learning uh, through books, or you know you can come to us, Seattle Law Broker, and get a couple of hours of consultation and learn how to do these uh, uh, questions uh, the right way while having fun. Uh, at the same time, you still get to know the person's core values, which is very important in deciding whether someone is right for you, knowing the right question to ask, learning how someone behaved during adversity, difficult situation. I think that's so important for you um, younger um, ladies to get to know the guy. And the guys too, you know, you guys should know how to ask the right question to find the right girl to build a family with the right woman. So thank you for asking me this. Is there anything that you would like to share about your experience uh, interning what you learned at Seattle Law Broker, Victoria and Isabel. Uh, let's start with Victoria. Yeah, I mean, Monique, it was such an honor. You've continuously pushed me to get out of my comfort zone and just challenge me, which I'm so grateful for. I really figured out my strengths and weaknesses. I And it was just inspiring to see you, all of your areas of ex expertise and gain knowledge from it. You really do it all and <laughs> <laughs> you're so kind. You're so sweet to say that. Um, I would say, you know, it's all about the guest. I mean, you know, the show that I do and the clients, it's all about them, you know. So, uh, yeah. but I, I will be, I will say I'm most proud of the guests that have come on the show. I, I got very lucky um, with Afternoons with Monique came, coming on. This past summer, we're on uh, number 25 episode today. And 
I mean, couldn't do it without the two of you, really. So thank you for that. Isabel, how about you? What have you learned? Yeah, I also have learned a lot from you. I think for number one, you're an inspiration to see you running your own business in this way. Um, and as a woman and a mother and someone we can both look up to and gain experience from. Um, yeah, so I have really appreciated that and just having you in our lives during this time, during the pandemic, um, and that you've just guided us along and shown us the way and you have applauded us when, when we're good and you have just directed us to like the way to think about things critically. And I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I could go on. You're just so compassionate. Oh my God. I, your, your whole business and your your aim to help people build relationship skills and not only not only dating, but to to help them grow inwardly as their own being. And beyond uh, SLV, you have afternoons with Monique where you want to engage in these conversations with people and get to know them and what they're doing. And just all of that, you're so well rounded and you put a lot of effort into what you do. So thank you. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys are making me blush. But you know, I learned from you too. I've learned uh, from the two of you how to handle people, how to work with people, how to guide the better. So, you know, you guys learn from me, but I also learn from you guys. So thank you very much for that. So I think that is maybe our time is up. So I, I thank you both. And in a few hours, it will be 2021. So um, I bid you both and the audience a wonderful 2021, a better, healthier, more prosperous 2021 than 2020. Thank you very much for joining us this year. Thank you for joining Seattle Law Broker and Afternoons with Monique Victoria Bonda and Isabel Pfeiffer. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Bye Happy now. New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. Bye. Bye.